Hello guys, welcome to the machine learning mindset. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about TensorFlow 5 format, which is uh, which is the TensorFlow favorable, um, as I mentioned, file format to use for deep learning purposes. So I previously wrote a blog post which explained the concepts in general and basically uh, showcased the importance of that. Um, TensorFlow, in general, you do know that um, it's becoming the de facto for the deep learning. So if you just search in the Google trend, let's let that to be just get started. So probably in this tutorial, I, um, I would um, rather to think with you. It's like I don't basically um, want to make it fast. I want to think like you. We just go through searching different concepts so I can explain every detail. You. so let's just search for the tensorflow as you would see it's just um, the google collab tensorflow um, tensorflow um, um, basically the dropout the relevant concepts basically those are being searched a lot and it's becoming certainly one of the most important frameworks in the deep learning if not the most in fact let's just consider the past five years of that it's an increasing trend TensorFlow, except the last few months, it's probably because of the COVID 19, I'm assuming. So, let's just go ahead and talk about the TF records. So, you can check the blog post in the description below. So, you can refer to the blog uh, basically uh, and getting an idea of what is the TF records, the general things, and all the codes are available on the blog. So, you can have access to them and read more details about um, how we are going to do and why we are going to do what I'm going to show to you today. So TF records, it makes the situation much easier for us in terms of that being very fast. And in case you have a very large data set and you cannot feed it to the memory, TensorFlow will allow you to, it allows you to um, read the data in a linear, um, way and you process the batches in the training so it not only uh, has good effects on the memory um, it has a lot of advantages for speeding up the training so let's just go to the code here as usual i'm using google collaboratory and i'm importing tensorflow df and tens a keras from tensorflow and importing numpy as np as usual so here I am going to load the MNIST prepared dataset. So you can go to this link and uh, search more about this functionality. Keras dataset MNIST will load the data in two different set of arrays. And we are going to pre-process that data. So we divide the training by 255. So we have a dynamic range of zero to one. For all those training and testing we return the train d type data type and the label data type as below because we are going to need them later on so let's just run this thing to just make sure that we got the result so here it is so if i'm going to just simply print numpy mean numpy max of the train to check the dynamic range here you would see it's in the zero to one dynamic range let's just get, go ahead so here i want to showcase a couple of examples of training so the normal example is 16 for i in range of number of examples to show i'm just creating an empty list append train samples through that and I'm using matplotlib and image grid. I am going to um, basically simply um, draw an image grid. So it's important to put the parameters here as we do need it. So probably let's change this thing to see what's gonna happen. So the size becomes slower. We are going to, we wanna increase the size a little bit. Here we have number of rows, number of columns as four and four. If, let's say if we put three, what's going to happen? So only three of the 16 elements that we picked 
are going to be showcased we just want all of them to be showcased here so that's a very simple way so i'm just using axe im show as gray make sure that we uh, showcase the mnist as gray so if i just remove that that's here is all it's a different but that doesn't uh, make sense for mnist because mnist is black and white and we um, should um, uh, display it as a black and white image so let's just go ahead so here we do need a couple of stuff so in the process of generating a tf record for above uh, we are going to have some different file formats which needs to be converted to the tf.example type which is understandable by the tf record so these are a couple of functions here i'm going to get back to them later but for now let's just run them so i have them in the memory so here this is another um, important function which we have image example as we basically want when we want to decode an image to um, bytes and strings and serialize it to the tf record we don't need this function later on so let me just write again and here i just simply want to write my data set to tf record so one may ask mnist is already prepared as you have it here why are you doing this so this approach works for any kind of data set so the reason that i pick mnist because it's very simple and it's very understandable visualizable and for the purpose of this proposal it's, uh, it's um for the purpose of this tutorial it's very simple to go on so this is the record file which we name it mnistrain.tf record and we're going to have number of examples as all the training data the dimension is the second basically xtrain so let me just um, put system exit here it's not allow the code to go so we are going to print print xtrain that shape to see what is the shape of the training data so it's six sixty thousand twenty eight by twenty eight so this is the feature size twenty eight twenty eight this is the size of <clears throat> um all training samples so one may ask why we do need this so i'm going to explain it later so here with tf.iotf record writer record file as writer we have as follows for i in the range of all samples that we want to write the tf record we take the image we take the label we put it in this image example function that we provided here we encode everything and after that using dot serialize to a string we are going to serialize this input so we can store it using write write function in the tf record file so how do we encode it so this is some sort of image example we are going to encode it as this so now a couple of data types are supported by tensorflow which are float feature in feature and byte features nothing else so here i'm going to encode the image with, uh, with dimension with int 64 label with int 64 features and the image with byte first i have to transform the image to bytes and then use the byte feature the reason we're doing this because the image cannot at this moment the image cannot be directly stored because it's like a matrix it needs to be serialized in a binary format so we do need to we do need to change the image from whatever it is to bytes so here does the trick we use tf train features to just create the dictionary of features which can be fed in the tf train example so <coughs> You can check this thing online tf train example tensorflow this is a protocol message so as you can see at this moment tensorflow doesn't provide um, that much of information for individual functions so i'm going to explain for you this is a protocol that you need to use to transform the data to be able to serialize it and we use the same the features is the argument of tf train example and it requires a tf train features type and by itself it has an argument of feature and each feature is the dictionary as this form that we created in this function so when we use this function we can go ahead and create our tf record file format and 
now you simply wrote it so if you check if you check the google collaboratory uh, files you can see the tf records so how do we read it actually so with this tf data which is part of tensorflow data set api and tf record data set we can simply read this record file as we define it here so after this reading we need to parse individual examples from the data because this tensorflow uh, as this tf record and tf record is not like a simple format that you can um, parse everything at once like matrices and we do need this, this decode record function as well which i'm going to explain both of them so for recording data set because data set is basically an object and each element is one record in a data set according to the tf data tensorflow api let me just show that to you so this is the api and the tf data api things are very easy to just work and create data sets making things faster reading processing pre-processing so you should definitely take a look to enrich your knowledge in this area so this is the link so feel free to just go and explore more so i'm going to continue on the code so now i am using this record in the parse record so for each record we need to parse that record and uh, return it to a format that is understandable to us that parse record with the number of features with the same format as we encoded here can be parsed and here we use tfio parse single example for each record and the feature dictionary that we already have here so that makes it clear but when we want to return it to images again we need to decode this parse um, record so the decode record we have to use tfio.decode raw because remember we serialize the records and save them as binary here so now we have to decode it we use tf decode raw which is, this is our record and remember this is data type we said you need it so here we extracted the initial data type so we use it here for decoding if you use a different data type you probably get an outcome which is not exactly the images that you've been working on so be careful about this output argument to set correctly and later on it's very simple we can just use the record label because the int is not string and it's very easy to read it it's the same thing we use record for dimension but the images are of um, flattened types so we need to reshape the images to the original image um, types so here let's say before this we want to print image.shape System that exits, so you just you just don't want the next line to be wrong. Let's just run this for a second. So you do see, oops. Let me see. Yeah, we didn't run. We didn't run this thing. This part. Yeah, now it should be okay. All right. So this system, it's a system name system is not defined, so we didn't let it to run after a moment. So here you see the images are flattened for. 784 which is 28 by 28 so we don't need to just simply reshape it back to the dimension that we already saved that's why when we did the encoding we stored the dimension as well because now for decoding we need it so now we can have a slight relief go ahead and try to read it so for each record we basically decode this thing and append the images into an image list and we can further processing the images for our purposes now we are going to reconstruct 16 images and the reconstructed images should be identical to the images th that we ge generated here because we simply reconstruct and if you're doing a good job uh, it should be done yeah you see it's just simple 5041 so that was all um, here um, as a summary we just tried to use tf records as a file format i just show you how to simply write tf records in tensorflow 2.2 
and how to read them as well so you can simply use this code for your purposes however probably you need to repurpose some parts um, depending on your data set so thank you so much for watching um, i hope you enjoyed it feel free to comment below if you have any questions see you soon